This is the button pad, an open source module consisting of 16 RGB LEDs and 16 buttons, all fully programmable and accessible through a USB cable. The button pad was designed by SparkFun, but it is no longer being produced. Since the designs and software are all freely available online, I decided to build these units from scratch and use them as I explore the strengths and weaknesses of analog peripherals surrounding physical media control and design. The first step was to figure out how to make the PCB boards, which would hold all the components and LEDs in place. The PCB files can be downloaded from the buttonpad.com and can be opened in Eagle CAD software. From there I made slight modifications to the stencil and was ready to send the files to a PCB shop. A few weeks later, I had 10 PCB boards ready to be populated with components. Using Eagle, I generated a bill of materials and ordered the same parts online. Most components were found on eBay, and the ones that weren't, I ordered from Digikey. A few weeks later, most of the components arrived. It was time to start building the units, but first I needed to machine a solder stencil. The solder stencil would allow me to easily attach my surface mount components to the PCB without worrying about making any mistakes. I tried a few methods I found online, but most didn't work so well. Next I tried using a CNC machine, which worked out much better. I experimented with various materials and found that tin metal worked the best. I purchased a piece of tin and finally had a solder mask I could use on my PCBs. It was now time to build my very first button pad board. I first used my solder stencil to evenly distribute the solder paste along the traces on the PCB. Next, I placed each component on the appropriate footprint of the PCB. The first few were tricky, but after a while it became a lot easier. Once all the components were in place, I turned on my hot air rework device. This allowed me to melt all the solder paste and fuse the components to the board. A few minutes later, I was finished. I inspected the boards and noticed that there were some broken connections. I quickly took out my soldering iron and fixed those. As soon as I finished my first button pad, I was anxious to see if it worked. Using an AVR programmer, I burnt the button pad firmware to the microcontroller I just installed. As soon as the program was copied, the button pads came to life. Some of the modules had a row that didn't work. I rechecked all the connections and eventually all the LEDs were lit. It was now time to start writing some programs for the button pad. The SparkFun API provided a great starting point for controlling the LEDs and changing the colors, but reading the button state was a mess. I rewrote some of the firmware to make reading the button presses much easier. Instead of having to ask the button pad if the button was pressed with code, the button pad would now send me a signal as soon as each button was pressed. I started writing a few simple games on the button pad. I found that with only a few functions and some condition statements, I could make some pretty fun and engaging games. Here's an example of Whack-A-Mole and the matching game.
Next, I wanted to experiment with different types of controls I could create with the button pad. I wrote some code to emulate a keyboard and mapped a different letter to each button on the button pad. This allowed me to key map switches in Ableton Live and use the button pad as a controller for it. To make key mapping easier, I developed an application that will allow me to edit each button's key and color. This made mapping the button pad to other software much easier. Here I am controlling a flash game of Space Invaders from the button pad. Lastly, I also wanted to see if the button pad could be an effective tool for notification services. I wrote a simple IMAP server lookup that would constantly check your inbox for new and unread emails. The number of emails in your inbox would be represented by the number of LEDs that are lit. Although the button pad does have some limitations, it demonstrates the advantages of physical devices in an ever-growing virtual world. Thanks for watching.